Usborne illustrated myths from around the world. Fire of the Jaguar This myth was first told by Kayapo people of Brazil, whose stories are filled with the fantastic plants and animals of the Amazon rainforest. All were still beneath the forest canopy. No birds soared, no beasts climbed or crawled. The only movement was the rustling of palm leaves up above, stirred by the gentlest of breezes. Go, Botok, came a sudden shout. Instantly, two boys erupted from the, from the undergrowth shrieking loudly and startling a pair of bright red muckles from their nest. The boys took aim, drew back their arms, and a moment later their spears whistled through the air, narrowly missed the scarlet birds. You were too slow, Bertok, muttered the oldest boy, skulking ahead to collect his fallen spear. Now what will we take back to the village for dinner? The boys had been hunting all day, and so far they had nothing to show for it. If they were to return home empty-handed, their family would go to bed hungry. Botok scratched his head. The birds are gone, but their nest is still here, up in that cup of tree, he said, pointing at a small hollow high up in the tree. I bet they left their eggs behind. We could bring those back. The older boy looked up to where Botok pointed. Don't be a fool. You can't climb up there. However, do you expect to get back down? But before he could finish, Botok had started to climb the huge tree, slowly but surely making his way up to the nest. When he got there, he called down to his brother. Two. There are two eggs here. Botok's brother sighed. Well then, throw them down and he held out his hands ready to catch them. Botok carefully lifted out the eggs, lined them up above his brother and dropped them. The moment the eggs landed in the older brother's outstretched hands, he let out an almighty yell. Ouch! Botok, what are you doing? Dropping stones on me. What are you talking about? said Botok, confused. I dropped the egg as you asked me to. Botok's brother lifted his hands to the sky. If they were eggs you dropped, do you think I would have hurt my hands like this? No, you dropped two huge stones. I, I, I don't understand, babbled Botok, looking back and forth between the nest and his brother. I was sure they were eggs. But Botok's brother had had enough. I'm going home, he shouted. You can find your own way back. And he stormed off, taking both spears with him. Brother, wait, I'm stuck, cried Botok gingerly moving along a branch, trying to work out how to make his way back down. But his older brother was long gone. Hours passed when at last Botok heard the crunching of twigs and the shifting of leaves beneath him. His heart leaped in his chest. Brother has forgiven me, he whispered to himself. He is come to rescue me. Botok's excitement quickly disappeared when a strange laugh echoed among the trees. As wild as the roar of a great predator, but light-hearted like the chuckle of a full-grown man. As Botok looked on, a jaguar stepped out into the open, standing on two feet with a bow in one hand and an arrow in the other. Up until this point, Botok had never seen a bow and arrow before. He had also never seen a jaguar on two or four feet. What are you? he called out his eyes wide with fear. Me? snorted the jaguar. Why? I am jaguar, of course. And I know exactly what you are. He licked his lips, then smiled a wicked, toothy grin. What am I? asked Botok. You are stuck, said jaguar, also purring in amusement. I thought that was pretty obvious. You human.
humans are such funny creatures always getting yourselves into the strangest situations carefully jaguar slid the bow and arrow into a quiver on his back he bent low to the ground then sprang forward darting up and along the trunk to where botok was stranded before botok could act jaguar grabbed him by the waist and pulled him free from the tree ah cried botok finding his voice in time to scream and he and jaguar hurtled to the ground where they landed with a soft thud on the forest floor come down human said jaguar you are safe now but botok would not come down the moment he was on his feet he was backing away from jaguar his fists up and ready to fight then he caught a whiff of something delicious he sniffed once sniffed twice before spotting the basket of fresh meat hanging alongside jaguar's bow his belly let out an enormous growl jaguar laughed wilder than ever your stomach could teach me a thing or two about growling he said with a smile now come along boy i will prepare you some food and you will see that i am no enemy jaguar stalked off through the forest and a few minutes later a cautious but curious botok followed behind him hugging his rumbling belly as he went please do come in said jaguar when they arrived at his home warm yourself by the fire and tell me stories of your village while i cook us some meat cook asked botok then fire botok had never heard of such things so the moment he entered jaguar's musty home and saw a bright hut something dancing and flickering across a pile of logs all he could do was gasp what is that asked botok afraid to take another step inside that why that's fire jaguar grinned there's no need to be afraid i will teach you all about it and that's what and that's just what jaguar did over the next few days he taught botok about the uses of fire he showed him how to cook meat making it taste sublime he explained how fire could warm you on a cold day and how dangerous it was if you did not treat it with respect and when he was done he taught botok how to use a bow and arrow too now that i have shared the secrets of fire with you said jaguar after a week has passed you must promise never to share it with human kind botok was taken aback how could he keep the wonders of fire from his people he started to complain but a low growl from jaguar made him change his mind i promise he said a little glumly Jaguar smiled and from then on Botok was his valued guest often visiting from his village to eat cooked meat and tell tales of his life all was peaceful until the day Jaguar's wife returned home after many weeks away exhausted from her travels who is this in my house she snarled dropping a huge basket of meat letting its contents spill across the floor Jaguar had left to gather more wood for the fire and Botok was all alone his mouth stuffed full of food before Botok had a chance to swallow let alone explain what he was doing there Jaguar's wife charged at him in a fury she swiped at him with her needle sharp claws almost raking his chest thief villain get out of my home she shrieked In a rush of fear, Botok sped from Jaguar's house, knocking his angry wife aside as he fled. He could hear her yelling behind him as he darted between trees and ducked beneath branches. He looked back only once in time to see Jaguar's wife aiming an arrow at his back. Thankfully for Botok, by this time she let it fly. She was too far away and the arrow skidded harmlessly to a halt across a mossy log back at the village botok's family surrounded him with concern he looked a mess 
His hair was matted with twigs and leaves and his breathing was frantic. What's wrong? they asked. What happened to you? Forgetting his promise to Jaguar, Botuk explained everything that had happened to him from the moment he had scaled the kapok tree. He told them about fire and cooked meat and bows and arrows. He told them about Jaguar and his wife and where they lived. How dare they attack you, a guest of their a guest in their home said Botuk's father outraged. Clearly they do not deserve the wonders they have kept hidden from us. By this time Botuk had recovered enough from his shock to see the wrong he had done, breaking his promise to Jaguar. They are not evil, Botuk protested. It was simply a mistake, I'm sure it was, but it was too late. Nobody was listening to him. Their hearts were too filled with rage and their minds too clouded by imaginary fires and sizzling meat. That night, Botok's family dragged him into the forest, demanding he show them where Jaguar lived. Reluctantly, Botok led them back to the kapok tree and from there to Jaguar's home. When they arrived, they were delighted to discover that Jaguar and his wife were out on an evening prowl. They were even more delighted by the strange wonders that awaited them inside. It's so bright, said Botok's brother, squinting as he approached Jaguar's fire. Timidly, he reached out a hand to grab it, felt its intense heat prickling his fingers and quickly snapped it back. You shouldn't touch fire, said Botok knowingly. Instead, grab a log and carry the fire upon it. So Botok's family each took a log and one by one carried away Jaguar's fire. But that was not all they took. They also took Jaguar's cooked meat along with his bow and arrows. When Jaguar returned home, he found it a dark and empty place, his fire gone, his bow and arrows missing. He fell to all fours and snarled at the sky, a terrifying sound filled with great anger and sadness without any trace of laughter. And that is why today Jaguar hunts without a bow and why he eats his meat uncooked and why he has no love of humans, all because long time ago a boy broke his promise. Thank you.